it's the best of the rest. Time to put them to the test. In case your memory is hazy, it's black exploitation, baby. This is Black's History Month, a 29-day celebration of black exploitation films. Cornbread Earl and Me is a movie you've probably heard more about than you've actually seen. It's another one of those movies that doesn't really fit into the black exploitation mold, and most people probably only lump it in with black exploitation because it stars some of the same people that are associated with the era, and was produced by American International, who made a career out of cranking out black exploitation films. It's notable for being Lawrence Fishburne's first movie, and anytime anybody brings it up, that's what they always mention, and how can you blame them? These days, he takes top billing and is front and center on all the promotional material, despite the title not even using his movie name. This is one of my mother's favorite movies, so I'm pretty familiar with it, but for whatever reason, I feel like its impact is not as strong as it should be. Cornbread Earl and Me stars Jamal Keith Wilkes as Nathaniel Cornbread Hamilton, or simply Cornbread, the neighborhood star basketball player who's two weeks away from attending college on an athletic scholarship, the first in the hood to do so. Jamal Wilkes was an NBA player in real life and started his career playing for the Golden State Warriors. He's adored by two young kids in the neighborhood, one named Earl, played by Tierra Turner, and me, played by Lawrence Fishburne. I'm just kidding. His name is actually Wilford, but I guess that doesn't really have a ring to it. The movie sets the mood in the neighborhood nicely. Cornbread is the hero who always looks out for the kids, is respected by the older generation, and doesn't get into any trouble. They all hang out at a convenience store, ran by a man who comes across more like a grandfather than just a store owner, and even the local numbers got one eye, the only stereotype in the movie, and played by black exploitation veteran Antonio Fargus, halfway jokes with Cornbread that he should give up college and come work for him. He's low-key proud of him, but just doesn't want to show it. You know what always happens when things are too good though, and at a pivotal moment in the film, Cornbread is shot dead in the middle of the street by police officers because of mistaken identity. As a result, Wilfred literally starts a riot. <laughs> You know what I love about movies like these? It's the fact that you can go back and look at them and see the things that people protest about these days aren't necessarily new issues. They have been going on for a long time and ignored. Not to get too political, but when somebody tells you something isn't that big of a deal anymore, refer them back to an old movie like this where people were making movies about the same problems that were never really addressed. Alright, back to the film. Let me know if any of this sounds familiar to you. Immediately after the shooting, the police and city government tried to destroy Cornbread's character insinuating that he was in a gang and had a weapon on him at the time. Next, they try to intimidate all the witnesses to the crime. Next, the precinct does an investigation of themselves and finds nothing wrong with what happened. All standard sweep it under the rug procedures still to this day. They even try to get Cornbread's parents to take a settlement, but in a deviation from reality, they vehemently refuse any financial compensation to just shut up, and they demand justice. Where I think Cornbread Earl and Mia sells is in the way it frames the story. The cops who did the shooting aren't corrupt like you would expect. One is black and one is white. And although the white guy did the shooting, it was a mistake. And his black partner, played by the great Bernie Casey, backs him up, much to the anger of the neighborhood and a black lawyer who's his friend. It's not as black and white, no pun intended, as it might appear. The movie doesn't really tell the story from any point of view and instead tries to put you in the position of any of the characters in the movie. Witnesses change their story, and cops get physical with people and even threaten their livelihoods. So it's not as easy as saying, oh yeah, I would definitely do this, because the movie makes you question what you would actually do in this situation, even when what happened is as plain as day. Most of the men in the story are terrible people, but I think that was on purpose, because Cornbread was the actual father figure that the kids looked up to, and now they are untrustworthy of everybody else. It tries to show the importance of neighborhood heroes who vow to make it out as people to look up to. I also think the mothers in the movie are the most important aspect because although they're kind of downplayed, the movie is driven by a mother's love. Cornbread's mother, played by the late Madge Sinclair, 
pushes for justice, the whole time ignoring constant disrespect towards her, her husband, and her son. Wilford's mother, Sarah, played by Rosalind Cash, has to try to pull her son together after losing his hero and does the best a mother can do to restore faith into her child. These scenes are the best scenes to me and really drive home the sometimes unseen impact these kind of events can have on a family. On top of the movie being star-studded, everything just comes together in a nice and impactful way, all headed towards a powerful ending that really drives everything home. Cornbread Earl and me tries to hit on all emotions and it's bound to resonate with you in some way whether you agree with everything the characters do or not. It's a classic, don't miss it.